Okay, what strength, oh my goodness, the skill. Step number one is we unclip, we take out the, actually Andy, you can take out the ladder. Remember we put it in this, there's a big zipper up the top here. And the ladder's inside there. Grab it please Andy. You don't have to open it. Hello. Look what they gave us. Oh, see that's why I opened it. Look there. I don't have to open this whole thing. A mallet. That oh. must be a gift from Howling Moon. I didn't know. I didn't know this thing came with a mallet. That's incredibly useful. Then we have to unzip the cover first. Okay, what's next, Rob? Okay, so once you've unfolded the tent, take it off the cover, unfold the tent, um, and pull it over basically. I'm, I'm going to do it by myself. It's a bit easier with two people, but you can just grab that extension, pull the whole tent up. So, then, once it's open, there are two poles here that extend and lift up and tighten up the entire tent. So you give it a good push and tighten it into place, like so. On this side, you do the same thing. Give it a good push and tighten it in. Then, there's this zipper, half a zipper, that goes into the groove over here. Slide that in. That's the groove that the, um, the same groove that the cover was attached to. And once that's sort of even, we can connect the zipper on the side here. Pop it in. Zip it up. And then let's go outside. Grab the pole. These poles. They pop through that metal eye uh, and then the guy ropes have a little d-ring on them which must be clipped over the top otherwise it'll rip off there so put that in the ground here is incredibly rocky so i'm going to tie onto a root on this side pole number two hook it on in the same manner and now i'm going to attempt to get a peg into what looks like mostly mostly rock I don't know if it's going to happen. Where's the power, Rob? The power... This, ah, ah, it went in a little bit. Let's see. Ah, that's not going to happen. It's just rocks. Let me try another spot. What if I go over here? No, I'm going to go over here. Hello. Here we go. Okay, so we are pegged. Yes. Let me tighten this one up a bit. So that's our rear awning. At a more of an angle. There we go. Like a hot knife into butter. There we go. All right, so once I've got a couple of pegs in, that should do it. Uh, pop inside. I haven't done all the electricals yet, but I just quickly wired up a little light for the tent and I can plug in the wire there. This is all very temporary. I will put proper switches and things in this tent eventually. Just You get a rubber mat that forms a... so you don't mess up the floor in this tent with this, this ladder. The ladder you have to you know the height of the ladder depends on the height of the trailer so you have to actually drill some holes that these lock into at the correct height pre-drilled because they don't know how high your trailer is i also shortened the legs so that when it's locked in um these steps are uh, line up because otherwise you could end up with something like that which is a bit tricky there we go then you reach over here pull the bed extension up, clip on your ladder, make sure it's loose, fold it down and put it on the mat there. Make sure the weight of the extension is on the ladder so you're not 
putting too much stress on the on the hinges on the sides but that should be fine once that's in there you can climb up and fold the mattress down we leave all our bedding up here so there we are my pillow Andy's precious pillow sleeping bags and we're good to go pretty much put this piece in there so what's nice is now we can open this up and from our bed let me just show you it's easier to do from the inside but we have a view from our bed of the dam morning what we can do here is I can lie in bed and then Andy can come around here to the kitchen area and make me a cup of coffee and hand it to me in bed very nicely we're almost set up I'm just going to open up the side of the trailer um, this is our kitchen area I won't show you all of this now but uh, basically it's a gas stove We've got water, I turn on the pump, and then we've got water back here, uh, put a little basin under the water, it just hooks on over here. It's only the second time I've put up this tent, but I reckon full setup will take us 15 minutes once we are, once we are good at it. Um, at the moment it's still probably taking half an hour. Especially when Andy doesn't press record and then I have to do things three, four, five times and that obviously adds to the, adds to the amount of time it takes. <laughs> Stay in there a bit, <laughs> These chairs, they, very, they fold up nice and small but then they don't unfold so good. Uh, I'm meant to just pull up and Piece for some reason hits. This is why we, we do double takes so often because Rob is <laughs> pretty good at certain things. <laughs> oh, well. oh there you gotta just why is that so loose? That's the problem. There we go. Okay, that one is done. One there we go. Andy, you wanna would you be more comfortable filming on my seat? Director's chair. There we go. I like it. Seat. Thank you, Robert. Get comfortable. I'm gonna throw the all the bags and things back there. I must say, Rob, you're doing a great job. I'm Thanks proud of Andy. you, buddy. Thanks, I'm proud Andy. of you. I'm certainly working very hard. So I'm, there we go. Another chair. I am going to sit down now. So what the trick is, is you've got to push them together a bit. And then they're open. Cool. All right, Andy, I'm ready for my coffee. That was hectic. Whew. But nice view we've got. So the reason for this whole trailer tent combo situation was first of all that line situation when it came into our tent in Babursa Hube. And then after that the baboons destroyed our tent in Kwai. So we ha didn't have a tent. Um, I have a, I've got a cheap, cheap uh, very fragile one which I didn't want to use. So then I did, was trying to decide between a good quality canvas tent but they're huge when they fold it up. Or going rooftop on the on the vehicle but our roof rack was already full of gear because I carry a lot of filming equipment so and also the roof racks got water fuel all sorts of other things firewood so we put a tent on the roof we wouldn't have enough space in the car so eventually I went with a trailer I've never towed a trailer before in my life uh, except for the one I take to the dump every now and then garden refuse uh, bought a used Metallion Genie. This is the first version. It's like the prototype of this of this trailer. They subsequently improved a few things, but I got it for a good price. So I was happy. Um, it's a lovely little trailer. It's a very lightweight. I went for the lightest possible trailer I could find. Um, it's only about 260 kilos before you add any extras. 
Um, it's got a, I've, I've redone most of the electrics. It's got a, I've put in a little lithium battery, 44 amp hour. Uh, it's got a nice big 80 liter water tank with a pump and a tap. It's got lights. It's got a fridge slide in the, in the nose cone. So it works very well and it provides a lot of space and it tows like a dream. We haven't had any, any problems there. Then for the tent, I, I, I was sort of trying to decide between Tenko and Howling Moon. Tenko is about half the price, so I was, that was appealing. But the Howling Moon just fitted better. It fitted uh, the height of this trailer better and it has the bed extension, which is, I think, critical. And the Howling Moon has the added room that can zip off. Whereas the Tenko, you have to buy either with the added room or without the added room. I bought the added room separately and it can zip off. So for this trip, we don't need it. When I go camping with my family, take the added room and we have a huge amount of space. Um, yeah, so it's very comfortable. We've, been, we've only slept in it for two nights. It's gonna be our third night. It seems to be working very well. I attached it in a slightly unorthodox way to the trailer. I've actually made up some hinges because I didn't want to waste all the space under this roof rack and in the front there where you see those jerry cans. Um, so what I did is I put some hinges on the back and then it locks down on the front here and you can actually pop out some pins and then lift the entire base and it uh, pivots up and then you can put things in this area and you can access those jerry cans on the front which fit perfectly under there and the, the base of the tent actually rests on those jerry cans. Oh, I'm quite happy. Andy, are you happy? Are you happy? Does this make you happy? You should be not recording, man. I can see the little... I've been watching that little light <laughs> going on and off because I'm... I, I know we're recording, Andy. <laughs> okay. <Funny> joke. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Andy, let's, let's make some coffee. I think that... that I think I covered everything about tents in one go there. Hey? I would love some coffee. Show the folks out there how Andy, quick you are at you making see, a good coffee. You should see Andy make coffee. He's become a barista of, of note. Um, what else did I want to... I can tell you one more thing about this. So, yeah, okay, the, the wiring, I, I, I basically redid the wiring. I, it came with a, a lead battery. I, it was a bit old, so I pulled it out put in a little 44 amp hour lithium it's got a DC DC charger so when we're driving it plugs into the vehicle charges from the alternator runs the fridge and everything most people then go with solar for when they're um, camping they uh, put up a solar panel and that and they have two separate systems one in the vehicle one in the trailer I didn't want the extra expense and the hassle of solar panels what if you know, a cloudy day I uh, got to keep that fridge running so I've decided I actually am charging the small battery when we're, when we're in camp. I charge the small lithium in the trailer from the big lithium in the car. And I do that via the DC-DC charger and it uh, works without any adjustment because when you plug a lithium battery into the input of a DC-DC charger, it sees the higher voltage and thinks it's an alternator, so it turns on. Um, so basically when we get back in the evening, we've been driving all day, the, um, the, the secondary battery in the vehicle is full and that's a 108 amp hour battery so it's got plenty of power we plug it into the trailer with a cable that the dc dc charger then activates and sucks oh, roughly half the power out of the um the car battery overnight tops up the keeps the fridge running and tops up the trailer battery and the next morning everything's you know the battery's full in the trailer we can go out driving again as we drive the alternator charges the the, bat the big battery in the vehicle again. All seems to be working like a charm. Nothing is, every, nothing is giving issues at this point. Everything's functioning very, very well. Um, the only concern with, only con slight concern with towing that we had was, you know, if you're on a, if you're on a tight track and you come across an angry elephant, you can't reverse. But Overall, I think the advantages way out, way outweigh the disadvantages because all this weight, all the fuel, all the water, there's an 80 litre water tank in here in this trailer. All that weight would have been on the roof rack of the car. And then every day we're going out driving, we're doing the really bad tracks, we're going off road and now we've got, you know, hundreds of kilograms of additional weight on the top of the car. Now we're leaving all the weight in camp 
it's a schlep to get to camp you know we, we can't reverse we've you know we've got to take take the easier roads can't do any off-road stuff but once we set up camp the car is light we can drive around freely without uh, all that additional weight and so I think it is a better solution as long as you're not it's a better solution as long as you're staying for a few days at a time if you were setting up camp and if you're moving a lot uh, then I would say perhaps go with the rooftop tent but the other thing is we get up very early in the morning and it's still dark and you've got a rooftop tent now in the dark you've got to climb up and pack away your tent and that's a bloody nightmare whereas with us we just climb out of bed Andy makes me a coffee he passes it to me through the through here while I'm still in my sleeping bag nice and snugly warm and I can look at the hippos while drinking my coffee and then we jump in the car and go. Is that a wrap? Have I talked enough now? That's like a half hour about the bloody tent and trailer. You like to talk. Oh, I don't like to talk. Talk I to I talk. I just get it out of the way. All right, rock and roll. Let's have some coffee, Andy. This is a very nice view. How's the coffee, Rob? It's so good, Andy. It's just what I needed.